Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies along with some extra goodies. The Gurgler is a great saltwater pattern that does an admirable job of imitating a shrimp noisily making its way along the water's surface. Start by picking up one of the heavy-duty forged saltwater hooks. After getting the hook firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise, load a bobbin with a spool of fluorescent orange uni-thread. Get the thread started on the hook shank behind the eye and take a few wraps rearward before snipping off the tag. Continue taking wraps to build up a thread base that extends to about the hook point. Snip a small clump of blood red fibers free from the hank. Secure the snipped off end to the top of the hook shank with nice tight wraps of tying thread. Trim the fibers so they extend rearward to just beyond the hook barb. Tease up a small amount of pink craft fur and snip it free from the backing. Pluck out most of the lower shorter fibers from the clump. Anchor the butt ends of the fur in a chip clip or binder clip. Here, I'm using a round chip clip. This will make it much easier to produce lifelike barring on the material with a permanent marker. Continue making marks on both sides of the material every half inch or so, all the way out to the tips. Measure to form a tail a full hook in length, then transfer that measurement rearward to the start of the red fibers. Take tight wraps of tying thread to anchor the craft fur to the top of the hook shank, then pull the material up and trim the butt ends off at a shallow angle. Continue taking thread wraps to clean up the area. Leave your tying thread right at the base of the tail. Comb out a similar sized clump of purple craft fur and snip it free from the backing. Here too, it's a good idea to remove as much of the shorter under fur as you can. With the clump cleaned, place it on top of the hook shank so its tips extend just past the pink ones. Use your tying thread to anchor the material to the top of the hook shank. Once again, snip the butt ends off at a shallow angle and cover them with wraps of tying thread. The fly should now look something like this. Pick up one of the pairs of monofilament eyes and snip them apart. With the monofilament curving out, secure one of the eyes to the near side of the hook using tight wraps of tying thread. Once done, snip off the excess butt end. Pick up the second eye and repeat the same tie-in procedure on the far side of the hook. Try to get the eyes as closely aligned as possible. Continue securing both sides before snipping off any excess. Cover the entire area with wraps of tying thread, ending at about the hook point. Snip a small clump of purple flashaboo, say eight to 10 strands, free from the hank. Fold the material in half and cut it at its midpoint. Fold it in half again and cut that midpoint. You should end up with a clump of about 40 short fibers. Here, I'm going to use a straight chip clip to get hold of the flashaboo in preparation for the next step. Trim the flash off so a half inch extends beyond the jaws of the clip. Then set the clip aside within easy reach. Pull down on your bobbin to expose about six inches of tying thread and make a dubbing loop with your middle finger at the bottom. Take a wrap around the hook shank, then one around both legs of the loop to close it down into a point, followed by a couple more wraps around the shank. The clip makes it easy to insert the flash between the two strands of the loop. You can then pinch the two strands together with the thumb and index finger of your left hand and release the clip. Ideally, you want equal lengths of flashaboo on either side of the thread. Insert a dubbing whirl into the bottom of the loop and give it a real good clockwise spin. This will capture the flashaboo and spin it into a brush. Get hold of the bottom of the dubbing noodle with hackle pliers so you don't have to wrap with the whirl and snip the excess thread and whirl free. Start taking wraps with the brush, pulling the flash back as you go. The idea is to build up a nice rearward pointing collar on the fly. Use your tying thread to anchor the dubbing loop, then snip the excess off close. Take a few more thread wraps to further channel the flashy collar rearward. Pick up one of the two-tone foam segments and flip it so the purple side is on top. With this side up, bind one end to the top of the hook shank right at the base of the tail. Do your best to secure and compress the foam by taking increasingly tighter thread wraps. Go back to the purple craft fur 
and this time tease out and snip off about twice the amount of fur as before. Once again, give it a real good cleaning. Place the fur on top of a raised surface, such as a book or here, a fly box. Spread the fur out to approximately the same length as your chip or binder clip. Trim off any extra long fibers. Now, snip eight to 10 strands of purple flashaboo free from the hank. Cut them off like so on top of the craft fur, trying your best to get them spread out evenly. You can then pick up the pile with your chip clip making sure a good half inch or so extends back into the clip. Flip the clip around and snip the wispy tips off square, leaving an inch or so of the material protruding from the clip. Again, set the clip aside where it's handy. Pull down on your tying thread, just as you did before. Create a dubbing loop and insert the material held in the clip, so about equal amounts are on either side of the thread. Use your dubbing whirl to spin the material into a dense two to three inch long brush. Get hold of the loop with hackle pliers and snip the dubbing whirl free. Relocate your tying thread to just behind the hook eye and start taking touching wraps forward with the brush as you preen the material back. When you reach your tying thread, use it to anchor the dubbing noodle, then snip the excess off close. Pull the material back and take a few more thread wraps to clean things up behind the eye. Now for the fun part. Preen the flash and craft fur down and fold the foam over top of the hook shank out past the eye and take tight wraps of tying thread to lock it down. Pull the end of the foam up and take a few more wraps to secure your tying thread behind the hook eye. Reach for your whip finish tool and use it to do a five or six turn whip finish, seat the knot well and snip your tying thread free. Cut the foam off square so it extends to the front edge of the hook eye. Trim the craft fur and flash body off fairly close, but allow it to retain its shaggy look. On this fly, it's a really good idea to add an ample drop of head cement to the thread wraps behind the hook eye, as there's a lot fastened in at this point. Gurglers come in many different colors and variations. All have been providing anglers with spectacular topwater action for decades. <laughs>